Hello, I'm Atubon George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and I'm sure in my spirit, like I know it, that God is about to do something extraordinary in your life. Praise God. Can we, can we make our demands? Remember the command God gave to us? Can we make our demands right now? So join me to say, say, Father, today... I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Listen, it's a demand that you have made. And the Bible says, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. Praise God. Now, how do I know what I just did is according to his will? Jesus commanded us to do it. Jesus said, when you pray, praise God, when you pray, say. And he says, one of the things we say, what we call the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. So I don't think there's any prayer that is more sure of being God's will, I'm telling you, did you, than this one that is your direct response to a command. And you see, it's not just the talking. It's the reasoning. That's where the power is. When you talk it and you don't reason it, then you're not saying it. See, Because you say from your heart and you talk with your mouth. So don't just follow me to say it. Reason it and say it with your mouth. And then, then it's coming from your heart. So when your heart and your mouth now agrees in one, then the miracle will happen. That's what Jesus meant when he says, if you say to the mountain, remove here and be thou cast into the sea. He said, if you say, he said, if you talk, said, if you say, because you say with your heart, praise God. Now, there's something the Lord has laid in my heart to share with you this week. And we're going to start looking into it and trust God to help us to navigate um, this journey. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Let your name be glorified in our lives. And even as burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed by the anointing of your spirit, we yield more and more to you that you bear your fruit in us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Man, praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'm sharing with you something very important about our salvation. Praise God. I want to title it Things Concerning Salvation. Things Concerning Salvation. Praise God. So 1 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I'm going to read from verse 14. It says, For the love of Christ constraineth us. I'm reading from the old King James. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. I want you to follow the pattern now. Now, see, sometimes when you study scriptures, it's important that you you try to understand what the writer is saying. Like Jesus talking to the Jews one day says, why is it that you do not understand my speech? He said, it's because you cannot hear my words. Now what did Jesus mean by that? You don't understand my speech because you cannot hear my words. So, but they were listening to him. Their ears were opened. They were hearing him talk. But you know what the Jews were doing? And that's the same thing a lot of, pe um, a lot of people do, a lot of believers do. Jesus is talking 
You're not really listening to what he's saying, but you just speak something he says. Say, ah, he said this and he said that. But you're not understanding the body of truth that he's sharing. And that's a problem with a lot of people. And that's how some people miss. Um, they, they just take scriptures and try to use it to form whatever they want to reason. Instead of understanding who's speaking, first of all, who's this speaking to, and, and what, you know, like they say, you know, then in literature, who said this to whom and on what occasion? Because if you don't understand that background, you will not even understand the communication in the first place. For example, when John was preaching in Matthew chapter 3, and then when he says, look, I come baptizing with water, but there is one who's coming after me who's man, mightier than I, who's shoe uh, lace, I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, he wasn't preaching an edifying message to God's people. He was rebuking the Pharisees and Sadducees. The Bible said when he saw they come to his baptism, he began to rebuke them. He said, you brood of vipers. They were the ones he was referring to as the brood of vipers. And then he said, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Meaning there is a wrath coming and it's directed at certain people. So now he said, who has? Now think about it. Look at the situation. So that's what we'll get to on what occasion. Okay, look at the occasion there. He was baptizing people. Now you study this for yourself in, John, in Matthew chapter 3. He was baptizing people. And now as a baptizer, your joy is that everyone should come to your baptism just like you're a pastor you're preaching and then you you maybe you rent a hall or you you build a place you want the whole world to come to listen to you that's that will be your joy but then suddenly this pastor is preaching and then some people just step into the into the auditorium and then he says you brood of vipers you brood of snakes who has warned you to flee from the rocks to come come on now are you not supposed to be happy that they have come to you. At least when they come to you, they will hear truth. But John was not having any of it. He says, who warned you? He, said, he even challenged them. He says, bring fruit that is worthy of repentance. And then he told them, don't think to yourself that you have Abraham as your father. What kind of message is that, John? Praise God. <laughs> you know, now some people think John was just being over, he was just overreacting. No, he wasn't overreacting. He knew specifically who he was talking to and why he was saying what he was saying to them. Praise God. So we're looking at things concerning our salvation. Praise God. So now he says, we thus judge. Because the love of Christ constrains us. So we just judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Okay? So then he says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So he says, listen, this is the how we see it. Now, understand also, this is not God speaking. This is Paul trying to communicate to the people he's writing to. But then we learn wisdom from what he's saying. So you don't use this now to juxtapose or juxtapose, uh, or you don't use this now to say, this is the word of God. No, it's not. Praise God. Someone saying, but Paul was speaking by the Spirit. How do you know? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is by the inspiration of God. Okay, so how, how, what, what is scripture? Does that mean everything you see in the Bible is given by the inspiration of God? It's sometimes people have this mindset that people sat down with their pen and they say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, tell me I want to write Bible, I want to write one chapter. Tell me what to write. People think that, you know, in their minds, that's what they think. This, it, that's how this book came about. No, sir. No, sir. These are accounts of people. That's why I will always define the Bible thus. It's a, book, it's a compendium of testimonies of people who heard the word of God or received the word of God and what they did with it and how they ended with it. That's what the Bible is. 
You, you, can't, you can't convincingly say to yourself that the Bible is the Word of God. Now, it's a book of truth, don't get me wrong. But when you say the Word of God, the Word of God is completely a different matter. The Word of God is that word or that transmission from God that comes to you as a person or comes to you as a group. That is the Word of God. Now, in the Bible, you will read that people receive the Word of God. So you see that the Lord and the Word of the Lord came unto them. Or, or it says, and God spoke and said. Now, that, that's quoting what God said. So that is the Word of God. And because it's a book of truth, we believe they heard God before they will say, this is what God said. Are you following me? So the one who did not hear God cannot say God said. So over here, what we're reading here now, this is Paul speaking. And then he says, this is, this is how we see it. That if Christ died for all, then all died. Meaning all was supposed to die. And so all will not die. Christ died for all. So if one man had died for all, then it is taken that everyone is dead. You understand? Now, but in the physical, they are not dead. They are alive. Why are they alive? Because one man died. They are dead. Follow my thoughts now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then it says, verse 15, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. So if a man had, has died for you, what does that mean? It means you should live for him. That's what he's saying. So if he has died for all, then it means those who are alive should not henceforth live unto themselves, but they should live for the one who died for them. Now, I hope you're getting it. All right, then. Then he says, Verse 16, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. And this is a very powerful thought here. We've known Christ after the flesh. What does it mean after the flesh? He's talking about those who walked with Jesus. Those who saw Jesus. Those who, 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 who met him, who touched him who ate with him, they knew him after the flesh. See, because they can tell you, oh, Jesus visited my house. We had a chat. I visited Jesus. I was his disciples. We went to crusades together. He says, hey, now know we no man again after the flesh. So, so we don't relate with ourselves, even ourselves, after the flesh. Sometimes, is it, these things are hard to understand, but but when you walk with God for a while and, and you're understanding the dealings of God, you will, you will get what he's talking about. For example, you remember John the Baptist was a cousin to Jesus. You remember? He was. Now, both of them were in ministry. John was called of God. Jesus was called of God. John was commanded to introduce Jesus. But John didn't even know that it was going to be Jesus until that day when Jesus came to his baptism. Think about it. Now, John was a prophet. He had a cousin who was the Christ, and he didn't know. You see, he was a true prophet. But he didn't know that Jesus is the one. So think about all the visits. They must have visited each other all the time. They went to the synagogue together. He must have seen that, oh, there's something spectacular about Jesus. But, but yet he didn't know that this is going to be the Christ. Until the day Jesus came to... Now, why did God hide it from John? We don't know. We don't know. Praise God. We don't know. And remember, the Bible says John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. Meaning, John grew up an extraordinary human being. Yet, he didn't know the Christ was right in his family. And then Jesus, being introduced of John, started his work in ministry. And then if you study the scriptures, you will have the sense that they, there was a bit of schism, you know, between John and Jesus. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, you read where um, John was baptizing, he continued his ministry baptizing, and Jesus had started his own ministry. And so bad that when John was arrested, 
you know, Jesus, there was no record that Jesus went to visit him in prison. It got so bad, John had to send people to Jesus and say, look, are you the one or should we expect another? And you see the reply Jesus gave to him and they're like, oh, what's going on? What's, what's happening is, is exactly what Paul is saying here. No, we know man after the flesh. You see, the call of God is that serious and many people don't understand it. Now our time is up for today, praise God. Now I'm going to continue tomorrow and, and what, what, there's a lot I'm going to be sharing with you. And the whole purpose is to give you a perfect understanding and perfect footing in dealing with your salvation. God bless you. Bye-bye.